Honorable Prime Minister. Madam Speaker, Honorable Members. I regret very much that the opposition chose a sideshow on which to make an inglorious stand and left the center stage of real activity of real decision making that is to say the parliament on an appropriation bill and supplementary appropriation bill and supplementary estimates of immense and historic importance I repeat one is saddened at the farcical adoption and pursuit of a sideshow and an avoidance of being at the center of major decision making on two legislative me measures, supplementary estimate, supplementary appropriation bill of immense and historic importance and which go to the heart and soul of the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines as we embark on the road to happiness. The Honorable Member for Social for National Mobilization said that his ministry is carrying out a program of psychosocial support which is dubbed in conjunction with UNICEF, the return to happiness. This supplementary appropriation bill, this supplementary appropriation, the supplementary estimates are the foundation on the embarkation of the road to happiness. And as Prime Minister, I say with absolute confidence at 10 p.m. on the 11th of May, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we will arise from the feverish ashes of COVID and the volcanic ashes of La Sofre. We will arise. Once upon a time, I was told a tale. Indeed, I read it subsequently in a book on the psychology of certain male personalities. I was told and I read that if a man is weak with women, invariably two apparently contradictory processes occur, but they are different sides of the same coin of male insecurity and weakness. On the one hand, women who are not so sensible yet cunning, one may call them crazies in the modern parlance, are able to drive weak and insecure, a weak and insecure man to absurdity through their cajoling and massaging the ego. 
On the other hand, if the weak and insecure man comes into contact or disagreement or confrontation with a strong, independent, wise woman, the weak and insecure man has a tendency to go ballistic and disintegrates ignominiously. And when he loses an argument in humiliation, he goes stupid and demagogic. I was told that tale, and I read it subsequently. Who the cap fit? Let them wear it. I would have liked very much to have seen us today. I have indicated to my colleagues that at the end of both the appropriation bill, supplementary appropriation bill and the supplementary estimates, I would have asked for a division, not just a voice vote. Because I wanted to show the international community that the parliament in our country, that we are at one on this road to happiness phase one. And for us to arise from the feverish ashes, ashes of COVID and the volcanic ashes of La Sofre. We can report that the parliament tonight would be at one, but the opposition would be elsewhere in folly. Absent for no good reason. If the Honorable Leader of the Opposition wanted to make a point today, and I don't concede that he has a point at all, but if he, were, if he wanted to make a point, having made the point, and the Honorable Speaker demurred, rejected his submission, and ruled. The only sensible thing for a wise and mature leader to have done with the interests of the nation at heart at a time like this was to say, Madam Speaker, respectfully, I disagree with your ruling, but I have to accept it. And I accept it in protest. But I shall remain seated here and I shall take part in the debate because the debate is larger than this trifling sideshow. And that I will present our view, the opposition view of what is before us and that we can move forward together. But Madam Speaker, I would advise you that if the reason for my complaint arises to speak in the parliament, I will withdraw myself temporarily and then return. In other words, you make your point even though it's not really a point. But you reach heights or depths of absurdity, of folly, of farcical conduct by saying that you don't accept any ruling of the speaker. Don't talk to me about that. I don't. Don't quote for me any rules. I'm not interested in any rules of the House. I'm not interested in the Bible of parliamentary procedure, procedure asking me. Not interested in any of those things. I'm mean, interested in something higher. What higher 
is ill-defined, almost Trumpian in its formulation and conduct. I hope what I say here tonight is recorded and repeated. I earlier, Madam Speaker, spoke in very measured terms by restating clearly principles which I do not intend to restate, except to reaffirm that they are enduring. No self-respecting leader allows the metaphoric tail to wag, to wag the metaphoric dog. Not at all. You stand up to folly, you stand up to farcical propositions, and tell the persons who are advancing them to you that that doesn't make any sense in any case. The circumstances require demand a larger vision, a larger thought process, and let the issue about which you are complaining take its natural course. And we know the natural course of investigation and assessment of evidence and authorities which are to do what they have to do, make whatever decisions they think appropriate and correct in all the circumstances. This is not the first time we have seen such conduct. And the European philosopher once said, history repeats itself first as tragedy and then as farce. And we have arrived at this farcical juncture. It is important that all of us in this country maintain a social solidarity and those who want to be absurd and farcical that they ought to be isolated and let the rest of us get on with the business of building this nation and to use the words from the Ministry of Social Development. Happiness, here I come. Let happiness be. On the road to happiness, phase one.